Hello Country 100. Look at your radio. Now look at me. Now look at your radio. Now look at me. Funny, your radio doesn't sound like me, but it could sound like me if you pick me for the 2010 Craven Country Jamboree Correspondent. Look at your hands. Now back at me. Your hands are now tickets to the Craven Country Jamboree. Now look again. Those tickets are now smoothies that I could be bringing with me when I go to the Craven Country Jamboree in the morning. Now, you're with the man your radio could sound like. I'm on a tractor. Hey guys, we're down here at Jake's Saloon with the local singer, Megan Nash, and she's, uh, she's willing to do an interview for us on a, on a late afternoon here. Megan, how are you today? I'm doing well, Nick. How are you? Oh, I'm not too bad. Good, good. So, I was wondering, how did you start into your music? Well, I had planned on biking across Canada in grade 12. It was a goal of mine to do, and I was saving up my money. And then I just decided I needed to buy a guitar. It was actually after the death of my grandpa. I just, in order to deal with it, I went to music. So, I took up. I took like the $300 down to John's Music and Moose here and I bought the guitar and then I started just strumming away at it and writing songs. My first performance was at the Christmas Musical at Mortlach School. <laughs> I sang two songs, it was only like two minutes, but it was the most terrifying moments of my life. I'd imagine, I'd, I've, I've been in that scene yeah. too, not singing or anything. Well, I guess the odd karaoke here and there. Yeah. But performing can just be nerve-wracking, whatever kind of oh, yeah. style it is, whether it's dance or... Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, coming from a small town, how did that influence your uh, music? Well, I, I grew up around a lot of country music. Most so, how did living in a small town influence your music? I was exposed to a lot of country music growing up. Um, I also had my mom's 80s hits cassettes lying around. Um, but a lot of my friends listen to country music, so that's what I was immediately drawn to. That's what I found I was creating when I first got involved with music. Um, and also, I, I believe the, the subject matter was greatly affected by my surroundings. You know, country music is heavily based on family and friends and good morals, and I, that reflected in, uh, in my writing. So I. I've learned that you went out into the Maritimes to yes. go to school. Yeah. And like how did that influence your music out there? Did it change anything at all? It did. It did. Um, I went out to Nova Scotia to take a music business course. Um, I realized early on in my career that I need more I needed more knowledge in order to do this. It's a different industry now, it's a new industry and I need to be more business minded with it. Um, like all artists need to be nowadays. Um, so I went out to Nova Scotia, took this music business course, and the music scene out there is so vibrant. Um, there's a really great folk scene. Uh, I went to a lot of shows, and it's just, it's a, it's an addictive scene out there. It's, and it was hard not to be influenced by that. And I, and I definitely was, I found that I, I went a little more folkier style, but it was a great experience. That's awesome, it's awesome. So I have to ask you, if there is one person you could do a duet with, who would it be? That's a tough question, because I love Reba, because I find our voice, voice tones are kind of similar, like I've been compared to her. And we're both redheads. And we're both redheads, of course. Um, so be, it, it would be awesome, but then she would totally, she totally, oh, oh, like, she would be amazing. So I don't know who else I would have. Like, that's a guy. I'd say Reba, yeah. I'd always like to, I'd like to do like a Johnny Cash duet, but he's... no, that's true. That's true. Yeah. That's, that's a little great. tough to do a Johnny Cash one now. I know. That's just so weird. Yeah. So, what are some challenges being a musician like starting out here? In the well, there's numerous challenges. It's in order to do a good recording, in order to make a really solid record. Um, you know, you need to get other people involved, and unless you have those connections already lined, like usually that involves some financial help. So it can be financially challenging um, because, because you know, due to the internet, there's so many artists out there. People have access to so much music now, which is a great thing. But it's just you're amongst so many other people. It's how do you rise to the top, right? So it's about marketing yourself, and there's a lot of things that go into it. But I think it's, if you're persistent then eventually your efforts will pay off. So, I read here, and I read on Facebook that you recently played at the Relay for Life concert. I'm going to, um, I'll be playing at Relay for Life 
on June 4th. Uh, I go on at 6 p.m. and my sister will be backing me up and also I'll have a special guest Dan Hayward coming up and singing the Three Teams of Three Teams. Right on, right on. So where, what other stages, like like the Grand Ole Opry and stuff like that, what, other, what stage would be your dream stage? You know, I used to really, that Grand Ole Opry was a huge goal of mine. I was like, I need to go play and then I kind of you know, I would love to go. I would love to go to the Grand Ole Opry. I hope, you know, after the floods, they get everything all repaired, and that was that was awful what happened down in Nashville there. I would love to go there. If I get to sing there, that would be amazing. Um, but the goals for me was to be able to do music full-time would be a huge goal. You know, I just, to be able to uh, do what I love full-time would be amazing. So, yeah, that's a huge goal. So, you were talking about the processes into, like, making a record and that. Mm -hmm. And I've, re I've been told that you have your own record label. What made you go to making your own label as to getting someone to pick you up? Hmm. Well, it was kind of by accident that I made my own label. I just didn't think about it at first as a label. What I was doing is, you know, I was hiring studio musicians. I was picking my own songs. I was doing my own marketing. I was you know, choose my own studio who to work with and putting out CDs. I was selling CDs, so really I was I was being my own label before I even put a name on it. Like now I, I do have a name, it's called Little Gingy Records and that's the label that I operate under. Um, but really it's, you know, the, the labels, it's all changed with the new music industry. It's changed not so much as it is um, always a good idea to get a major label deal, so I just decided to do things myself because, I don't know, nobody else is going to do it for you, so. Would you ever pick up other, like, artists starting out, like, I know, uh, being at Chillers lately and stuff, like Josh, or Dave Slack, and there's that other guy yeah, there. Yeah, Dan Hayward, uh, Dave Slack, two guys in town I, that are good friends of mine, not only are they extremely talented, um, that works out well that you can play music with your friends. That's yeah. that's awesome. Um, you know, like it would definitely, I definitely, I'd love to develop into that. Um, once I get my own career on the go and have that all figured out, to take other artists and help them out would be fantastic. I'd love to be able to do that. That definitely is a long-term goal of mine. So, where? Okay, so. How about some upcoming events? Is there any upcoming events other than Relay for Life? Yeah, I have Relay for Life on June 4th, and then I also have um, White Boy Slim, he's a local blues player, and the CD release is on uh, June 12th. So I'll be opening for him then, and then also I'm at Sidewalk Days in Musha here on June 19th, and then I have a few festivals coming up this summer as well, but I will be having a show that hasn't been announced yet um, in September. So there'll be some updates about that one. Right on. Well, it was great having you here at Jake Saloon tonight, Megan. Yeah, thank you for having me. And I hope everything goes well with your music career and keep going up and keep on keeping on. And for uh, Southern Saskatchewan's Best Country, I'm Nick Cornia. Thanks a lot. I'm Leslie McKay Globa and talking to you about Nick Cornea today. I had the pleasure of meeting Nick all winter long during curling. Not only is he a fantastic curler, but he was a great volunteer too, helped us out with lots of events, especially with our youth program, all around just a great guy. And um, funny because the one day I was talking to him and I said, you know, you should work at the radio station. So here I am telling you again, Nick should work at the radio station. He is your guy. Nick, good luck. See you, Country 100.